there are a lot of products here on the show floor this year and of course visitors will be putting them through their mental plate paces on the stands but who puts those products through their paces when they've come out of the manufacturers who makes sure that these products do what they say to do to the standards that they really need to have in order to meet their customers and industry needs well funnily enough i've just bumped into someone whose job that is uh, rich from the lpcb uh, you try and, I guess, not necessarily break things, but break into things. Tell me about that. Right. Well, our, our job is to make sure that the products that we look at and that specifiers rely on for their security deliver the protection that's claimed. So our job is to find the vulnerabilities in those products before criminals or, uh, criminals or terrorists find those vulnerabilities. Sadly, we find 95% of the products that come to us originally fail to deliver that protection. So Get away, 95%? 95% fail. It may be one failure. It may be a number of weaknesses that are shown on that. If we weren't involved in that process, they could be being used and relied on to give the protection that, that a manufacturer may quite rightly believe their product achieved, but only when you put it to the test, only when you put tools to it and an independent mind. Yeah. Don't get your designer to attack something because they've designed it with something in mind. You need someone independent of that process to look at it. And you can talk to the number of companies that are here launching new products that we've approved, from doors to safes uh, to, to roller shutters, the first roller shutter with combined physical and um, ballistic protection which will go very well in the current state of threat that we see in France etc that those products have delivered but they don't necessarily pass first time those manufacturers recognize that and they invest it's, it's not a cheap process but they want to deliver good product onto the market products that they can be proud of and that their customers can rely on because as we've seen in Paris and other places unfortunately uh, lives can be lost if products don't deliver the, the protection that people rely on in terms of feedback, obviously you've got a, a, a pass-fail and that 95% of products not doing what they're supposed to be doing uh, you know, in the security, that, that's pretty damning. What sort of things are they failing on? Are you able to feed that back to the industry? Yep, the, uh, the manufacturers are present during our tests, so there are other places that they may go to um, where they can't be involved in that process. Most of our testing on the physical side is done at the manufacturer's own premises, so the design engineer can be involved, the marketeers can be involved, the MD can be involved, the accountant, if he wants to know how their money's being spent, can be involved, and that enables them um, to engage fully in that design process and making sure at the early stages in design that the, the the path they're taking in that design is going to breed success with the products going to deliver the performance. As um, police and others say in terms of designing out crime, you need to get in at the design stage of a building. The same is true with our work. We need to get engaged with manufacturers at the point they're first putting pen to paper or, or mouse to computer in terms of CAD making sure that that design's going in the right path. So, so we work with them at the various stages from an initial concept through, through to final product, rather than, thankfully, uh, these days compared with 10 years ago, failing 95% of a product that's already being marketed, and then they find out, well, actually, it doesn't do the job that they thought it was going to do. Now, in the uh, cyber landscape, ethical hacking is, is a thing. It's a big thing. But uh, is it quite so common in the, in the physical security landscape? Um, most of the work we do is manufacturers, but there's certainly a large arena very close to us here where we're evaluated the whole perimeter of that uh, arena that's going to be holding sports competitions in, uh, on an international stage, um, where they needed to make sure that out of hours that environment's safe, that people cannot get into them that may want to plant a bomb, for example, and not the type that thankfully was a false alarm up in Manchester, but something that, that could really do damage. Or, or in other environments wanting to get in to do damage um, uh, and, uh, that would prevent that um, facility functioning in the way that it's required because there's a lot of, inv uh, uh, of money in the sports world as there are with data centres, water and other things that we operate in. They need to know that their facilities, their assets are going to deliver uh, for the investment they've put into it and, and that security is, is key to that. So. Why should manufacturers, specifiers, uh engage you guys you know are, are you the de facto standard here you know what what's so special about you as opposed to other um, people who try and break into things on their behalf well our, our first point is uh, and always is you need to spot 
the standards that suit your needs. Don't just go with the first standard you come across. So for forced entry protection, there's a whole plethora um, that cover different threats from, from what we call stealth, where someone won't make a lot of noise breaking in, to ones like our 1175 standard that lead the world in terms of manual forced entry where noise is possible. And as a result, that's being specified in the Middle East, as far away as Australia, as specifying that standard. It's got great recognition and it's done a lot of work in um, the last 10 years, certainly in, uh, in protecting a lot of key assets in the UK against crime and, and terror. Um, so that recognition of, of that failure rate and the fact that to pass and get through, that needs to be a good product. It's a product people can rely on. They're investing in the security today. They expect that security work in 10 years' time. Specifying LPCB approved products, people know gives them the certainty that it will deliver. Terrific. Uh, Rich from the LPCB, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thanks.